up, boys and girls? Welcome to another episode of Walk on Wisdom. I'm your host, Michael Chandler, um, an expert at absolutely nothing, but been around the world a few times, had a lot of ups and downs, experienced a lot of things, and I really, really appreciate y'all's trust in me to give you some wisdom on the things that y'all are going through, questions that y'all have. Um, for if, if you're new to the show, um, these questions are coming in from our listeners from across the world who are sending them into podcast at michaelchandler.com. And uh, that list is continuing to grow and grow and grow. And it's only because you guys have responded so well um, to the show and the content thus far. And it is absolutely humbling. So thank you all for believing in me, being with me on this journey, and also giving you some insight into the wisdom of a walk-on. Uh, let's get right into it. First question comes from Brad. Hey, Michael, thank you for the content that you put out. I greatly appreciate hearing from another follower of Christ, follower of Christ who has also found professional and personal success. I was wondering, what is your perspective on how you walk the line of managing all your responsibilities? I am married to a wonderful woman and have two children, ages four and two. I am a chef and my current job allows me to be at home more than I ever have been, but can still have some longer days. We recently moved to Memphis and I have really been enjoying getting back in the outdoors and hunting again. I struggle at times with feelings of, of guilt because when I am away from home, I am not spending time with my kids and giving my wife the support that she needs. I was just wondering how you manage all of your responsibilities at home, work, and trying to fit in some personal time as well. Keep up the good work, Brad. Well, Brad, I believe you bring up a question um, of the balance of personal time, me time, things that I want to do um, outside of being a father and being a husband and obviously providing for your family. I can honestly tell you, I don't think I am that good at... Um, getting enough me time, doing things that I want to do. I think there are times in my life that um, I feel like if I'm doing something that's taking me away from the family, it better be A, making me money for the family, or B, building my platform for future money and resources for my family, or C, serving my family in some way. And as men, as providers, we can definitely get caught up in the, okay, if it's not serving them or it's not serving our bank accounts, which is in turn serving them, that it's a quote unquote waste of time or it is not important or I will push aside my wants to uh, fulfill the needs that I have to do for my family. And number one, Brad, I would say pat yourself on the back for even asking this question because it does truly mean that you are not like a lot of men out there who think that I do think the world is our oyster. I do think we should have fun often. I do think we should spend a ton of time with friends and do things that edify us and build us up and make us happier, healthier, harder to kill, and also feed our spirit in order to make us the best human beings possible. Because ultimately, that's what your wife and your children of ages of four and two need and deserve. Um, but there are a lot of men out there who probably take advantage of that. They probably think about their children and their wife and their duty that they that they have and the promises that they made a little too little. I do think you can care too much. I do think you can go overboard. I do think you can spend every waking hour only thinking about your family, only thinking about your wife, only thinking about your kids, only thinking about your career in order to provide for them that somewhere along the way, the individual, the man gets whittled away or whittled down into just a robot that has to feel shackled to the duties as a father, feel shackled to the duties as a husband. Um, and you can only find, I don't want to use the word balance because balance I think is somewhat of a myth. It's really hard to find it. And there's different seasons, different seasons are like, you know, a season of extreme career and it, then your family or your your social life may suffer. There could be a season of a lot of social responsibilities or filling up the social cup and then your career um, may falter a little bit. But pertaining to me, you're wondering how I manage all of my responsibilities at work, home, and trying to fit into personal time. Man, I think it's just a case-by-case -case basis. I think... I have a tendency to push myself into work and push myself into daddy duty and husband duty um, so much so that I think, okay, I've definitely done enough or done it so much that I 
deserve. Um, and I use the word deserve loosely because I think deserve is a scary word these days because I think too many people deserve, think they deserve way too much. But in the sense for your case, Brad, where you are really focused on pouring into your job as a chef, um, your career, your wife, your kids, I do think you have to find strategic times. You know, I, yesterday I played golf, for example. I don't play golf a lot. I would like to play golf more. My wife tells me I should play golf more. I probably would be, um, fill up that social bucket more, fill up the, my heart, uh, a little bit more to have a little bit more fun and do a little bit more, have a little bit more free time to play golf. But I did it strategically also when I knew I wasn't going to be missing a lot of time with my family. You know, um, I don't do a lot of stuff on the weekends unless it is an event or it does make me money. But for me, as you said, Brad, you do have a lot of free time these days. Um, so maybe during the week, whenever, um, I guess your kids are four and two, so that's, they're not of school age, but my son Hap goes to school seven hours a day or six or seven hours a day. So I have some time to go play golf if I want to. Or if I wanted to go hunting or if I wanted to go do something or I wanted to go um, just hang out and hang out with friends that I know is going to edify me, good friends, obviously, um, to where I'm not missing time with my family, if that makes sense. But the biggest thing is just to show yourself the grace, knowing that just by asking this question that you actually care, um, that is the most important part of this. Um but give yourself some free time. And also uh, don't be afraid to have that conversation with your wife. Cause if you're anything like me, you respect your wife so much and you always feel like you're not doing enough. That's something that I wouldn't say struggle with. I'm actually proud that I feel that way. I don't feel like I'm doing enough a lot of the time. Therefore it pushes me into doing a lot and being the father I want to be and being the husband I want to be, but talk to your wife about it and say, Hey, sweetie, how much, how much time do you think I should spend maybe going to go do this? Or, Hey, what do you think about me going to do that with the guys or playing golf with the guys or going hunting because it's turkey season or it's deer season or it's waterfowl season, whatever it may be. And then make it a conversation and let her, I, I don't want to use the permission word, um, but just like we have to give ourselves permission to be successful, we have to give ourselves permission to be, um, to climb to that next rung. I use that word, posit, um, I use that word permission loosely in the sense that I don't, I'm not really ever asking my wife for permission, so to speak, like she won't let me do it. But having that conversation unlocks that fear or that a wonder of, hey, should I be doing this? Because if my wife supports it and she says, hey, because we have a tendency also to not realize how much work we've been putting in, how great of a father we have been putting in, or how much great of a father we have been being. A lot of times we just see the forward and we haven't looked back and said, well, you know what? I have spent every single day home for the last 16 days or the last two and a half months. Maybe I do deserve it. Um, so I think making it a conversation with your wife, let it be a mutually beneficial and a mutually agreed upon um, event that you go do something or, hey, it's every Tuesday, I'm going to go to a early morning workout with the guys and then maybe coffee after because it edifies me or whatever it may be. Um, so think about that. Hopefully that helps. Brad, I appreciate the question because it means that you actually care and you are a phenomenal father and husband. Next question comes from Dennis. Hey, Iron Mike, massive fan. You're a good role model in, in a day and age where there are, aren't enough masculine role models. I'm a 26 year old guy. I just got out of a six year relationship with a girl that I met right out of high school. We both went through a lot and had goals to spend the rest of our lives together. For the past six years, all I did was work minimum wage jobs with no aspirations to anything. She decided to go back to college because she felt she, she depended too much on me emotionally and had no real friends, but just had me. She started going to college full time, making friends and surrounding herself with like-minded people that are working towards their goal and have their goals and have, po and have a positive, healthy mindset. She goes to school from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., Monday to Friday. She recently became a club president to build herself as a leader, which made her even more busy to the point she was only available Sundays because she would organize events Saturdays, leaving her to study all day on Sunday. I was barely, barely seeing her anymore and sometimes seeing her once, once every two weeks. I would complain to her that I wanted to spend more time together and she realized it wasn't fair to me that she couldn't provide and the love that I wanted. Part of my problem was that I made her my priority and not focusing on my future. Point is, she broke up with me four, day, four days ago to find herself and figure out the kind of woman she is outside of our relationship. 
we got together young and just had each other the whole time. And now she's finally exploring life as an adult by herself. I still feel sad and depressed because I gave everything, but she chose to walk away to be alone for herself and for my own good to finally do something with my life. She told me she's open to getting back together six months from now to start over our relationship, but it's not guaranteed. Thankfully, I've been consistently going to the gym for two months before we broke up. I'm going to go to, com to community college this September to start a nursing program, find a better paying job and work two jobs to save money to prepare for to prepare for school because I'm going to focus more on school once I start. I'm also working towards getting my driver's license because I can afford to buy a car right because I because I can afford to buy a car right now, but have no license. What are some things I can do to stay focused and consistent to get my life together? I never had to live my life alone as adult as an adult. I had a best friend and my family who were supporting me, but it's hard not to have her on my mind 24 seven. And I'm hopeful that there's a chance I can get her back in six months from now. But I should probably accept that she might not want to get back together. Thank you, Mike. Any advice would be very helpful. Sorry for the long message. I didn't want to make it this long. Well, hey, I'm glad you made it that long because it's just putting it on this email that you sent, um, just getting it out there, admitting some things, um, coming to grips with the fact that she may never come back. Um, you are 26 years old, so you all have been together right out of high school. Um, but it sounds to me like this is a, a recurring theme that I've heard a lot with a lot of people. People get together and then eventually they gr either have grown apart to the point of never being able to get back together or never seeing fit that they get back together or growing apart. As you said, with her going out and finding more of herself, who she is separate from you, because one overarching theme that I think when it comes to marriage, when it comes to finding your soulmate, when it comes to finding the woman of your dreams, the man of your dreams, the perfect helpmate and worthy adversary for the rest of your life, it's more, it's not two people who are operating at 50% who became 100% by coming together. It is two people at one, at 100% finding each other and then being okay on their own, being self-sufficient on their own, being confident to move forward into the future on their own, because that is the most attractive type, type of human being. You're not supposed to have it all figured out by the time you're 26 years old. Uh, Dennis, you're not supposed to have the, the forethought of where you're going to be five years from now, how many kids you want to have, white picket fence and all of that kind of stuff. We, we, we paint this picture of what we think life is going to be like by the time we're 20, graduated high school, or by the time we graduate college, or by the time we hit 30, or by the time we hit 40. I did the same exact thing. And I thought, there, I thought life would be a, a little bit different than it is now. Uh, I've honestly it has completely exceeded my expectations of what it would be. But in the sense that my wife and I talk about this by 30, we figured we'd have a lot of stuff figured out. And then by almost 40, we really figured we'd have almost everything figured out because that's what we thought the 30 and 40 year olds around us when we were teenagers, how they operated, we thought they had everything figured out. But the fact of the matter is the goalposts keep getting moved. The target keeps moving. All you can do is wake up every single day and try to win the day. And I know we did a, we did a show a couple of shows ago. Someone also was going through a breakup and the biggest thing, the biggest and best thing that you can do for yourself, the biggest gift that you can give to yourself is wake up tomorrow morning, a single man, accept the fact that right now you are a single man. You might not be a single man as far as this relationship goes forever. As you said, maybe six months from now she goes and she continues to pursue her passions. She continues to be around her friends and spend time with her friends. Maybe she even dates other people to find out that there are other men out there that are more suitable for her than you were. Or she realizes that the thing that she has been missing is you. There's no guarantees of that. And it's a hard thing to say, hey, you need to move on. I'm not saying you need to move on. I, I think it's okay. Like you said, you think about her 24 seven. I think 24 seven is a, obviously a, uh, a cliche way to say you're thinking about her a lot, probably thinking about her more than you want to, or what is the healthy amount that you should be thinking about her. But the biggest thing that you should be thinking about is you. What are your goals? Where do you want to be one year from now and the next 365 days? What can you do in order to get to that goal? the man that you want to be. 
a man who is worthy of um, her love, so to speak. Um, a man who has built more of a foundation, a man who is continuing to move forward. Uh, everybody deserves love. Everybody is worthy of love. Everybody deserves to be loved, but we can't look at where we're at right now and expect the things about us that we know we need to get better at. The things where we know we have to, the areas of our life, we know we have deficiencies, the areas of our life that we know we want to improve. We need to take stock in where we're at, who we are and, and who we want to be. The best thing you can do is be the most self-sufficient, confident in yourself, highest self-esteem, accomplishing every single day, moving toward who you want to become. And that is my advice. It all goes back to that self-image, being, being the man that she wants to be with. And maybe it's not her. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But either way, every man needs a battle to fight, an adventure to have, and a beauty to win. And I know right now that beauty, you feel like you won her and then now you have lost her. So you're kind of missing that piece. But go out every day, find a battle to fight and find an adventure to have. Do it as a single, self-sufficient, standing on your own two feet type of man because that the growth that you will find whether she comes back in a month or she comes back in six months or she comes back in a year or she never comes back, you are going to be a better man because of that. It's not your job to win her over. It's your job to win the day. It's your job to win the week and then win the month and then eventually turning that win each month into a winning year to become the best man that you possibly can be. <laughs> Wake up every morning, get in your gratitude journal. Wake up earlier. Get a job, get a paycheck, have a job, have a paycheck, go to school, get good grades, accomplish the things, prove to yourself that you are able to stand on your own two feet without her. That's the best thing that you can possibly do. Thank you for the question, Dennis. I wish you the best and I believe that you will continue to become a better man. Not that you even need to become a better man. I'm not saying that, but we all need to be better men every single day. That should be our, our focus. Become better man to be able to walk through the threshold of our house, to walk into the organization that we work for, to walk into every relationship, to walk into every opportunity, a better man tomorrow than we are today. Thank you for the question. Next one comes from Reese. Hey, Mike, my name is Reese. I'm 20 years old and I want to start a career in MMA. Currently, I'm working at a heating and air company with my grandpa, for my grandpa. While I'm grateful to, to him for letting me work for him, it is not something I am passionate about and I want to, and I do not enjoy it. Throughout my life, I played sports and baseball being my best. Ever since baseball ended for me, I always find myself still wanting to compete and test myself any way I can. I still remain very active today as I lift weights four to five times a week. About two years ago, I really started getting into MMA. I always try to learn more about each part of the sport, whether it be striking or grappling. My first question is, as someone who would be getting a late start in, in MMA and has no background in martial arts, what is a good martial art to begin building a strong base for MMA. My second and last question is what is a good way to talk to my parents about starting MMA? They have always said no. Every time I talk about it, I value my parents' opinion, but I feel like I should be able to make the choice for myself. Lastly, I'm a big fan of yours and I admire the person you are both inside and outside of the cage. Well, thank you very much, Reese. Um, yes. Number one, at this point, starting your MMA career at 20, um, it's not unheard of. It's definitely not too late. Biggest thing I would focus on is basic kickboxing and basic wrestling and grappling. Submission, defense, wrestling, taking guys down, getting them up against the cage, and then being dominant on the ground. Very basic. Be brilliant with the basics. Start being brilliant with the basics so you have a better chance of being successful. Starting at 20 years old, trying to go out there, having footwork like Dominic Cruz and striking like Peter Yan and or striking like Sean O'Malley or one of these guys that we watch and they're, they've been doing it for 20 years. You got to be brilliant with the basics first. Find a good coach at a good gym with a good stable of guys, training partners to train with so that you, A, can continue to get better and B, build 
a career or build, build a set of skills and a foundation with a lot of guys that you can push yourself with have competition every single day. Make sure you're not sparring too crazy hard. I see videos out there all day long on Instagram and YouTube. And these people are just going at it and getting knocked out in practice and getting knocked out in these, these gyms around the country. And they're leaving their careers inside of these gyms, not getting paid money, not under the bright lights, not advancing their career. Compete, compete hard. Don't waver, push yourself outside of your comfort zone, but do it in a safe way. So make sure you're at a good gym where you can stay safe, not get injured, not get hurt. Um, And then ultimately, since you have a heating and air um, job with your grandpa, that's a good thing um, and possibly a bad thing because obviously it's grandpa. You don't want to let grandpa down. If you say, hey, grandpa, I can't start until this day or can't start until this time this day because I want to go to morning practice or evening practice or whatever it may be. I would talk to grandpa about it. And say, hey, grandpa, can I talk to you in confidence about something? Because I know mom and dad don't really support it right now. That's a conversation I need to have with them. But hey, grandpa, what do you think about this? And maybe he's got the same attitude or the same uh, perception as your mom and dad do. And he's going to say, absolutely not. And then you're going to be at a crossroads and it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting time for you and a pivotal decision making process for you because ultimately you have to have a job at your 20 years old. But the fact that you said your mom and dad still, obviously you value their opinion and I valued my mom and dad's opinion. I still almost, you know, 37 years old now, I still value my mom and dad's opinion, of course, but I'm a grown man and I make my own decisions for me and my family. But at 20 years old, sounds like you are still possibly living in the same town as them or even having them pay some of your bills or maybe you're living with them, um, which is all fine, but Ultimately, the, that is that does get into a gray area where it's tough because if mom and dad are paying the bills, they hold the keys to a lot of things. So if you can be self-sufficient and pay your own bills, then you make that decision on your own. Also, at 20 years old, you should be able to make that decision on your own. Um, and that's what I would say about kind of mom and dad. You know, you don't want to you don't want to let them down. But there is a short window of opportunity if you want to to pursue your passion of mixed martial arts or pursue pursue anything. Any 20-year-old right now who says, hey, mom and dad don't want me to go into this field or this line of work. They don't want me to do this. They don't want, to, want me to move to this city or they don't want, me to, don't want me to take this opportunity. Every situation and family is different and it's a case-by-case basis. But ultimately... You don't ever want to look back and regret that you didn't do something because mom and dad didn't want you to. I was fortunate my mom and dad were completely okay with it, gung-ho about it. Um, I'm not sure it would have mattered if they weren't. I would have at least, you know, went out and tried it. And then once, once I was started becoming successful and defeated, I'd look back and say, hey, mom and dad, this thing's working out. What do you feel about it now? Um, but Reese, I don't know if that really gives you a lot of clarity. Um because that's a tough scenario and I don't like to make, I don't like to give uh, advice when it comes to family too much. Um, But you do value their opinion. But yes, you should feel like you should be able to make that choice for yourself. So um, I hope you find clarity. James 1, 5, he who lacks wisdom, ask for it and the Lord your God will give it abundantly. Reese, so believe in that you will find wisdom and clarity in that decision. Next one from Frank. My name is Frank. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Wisconsin. You are my favorite fighter. Much love. I want to join wrestling next season, but I get nervous around strangers, particularly older kids. Any advice for overcoming awkwardness slash being shy? Thank you. Frank, good question, man. 15 years old. Um, you want to join the wrestling next season, um, but you get nervous around strangers. The question is, are they really, are they really strangers? Um, once you become part of a team, once you join the team, once you put on the, the wrestling singlet or you start working out at the practices, they're no longer strangers. People are just strangers until you get around them. Now I will say I haven't always been the most outgoing person. You know, my, my closest of friends who I feel very comfortable with, I'm goofy. I'm joking. I'm just acting a fool, um, making jokes nonstop seem very, very outgoing when I'm in a crowd. A lot of times, um, I am a guy who can be, you know, very outgoing 
but a lot of times when I'm in a crowd around strangers or other people, I've been in the room with a lot of people who I perceive as a lot more successful than me, or I perceive as a lot more advanced or a lot more long in the tooth or a lot more, um, have a lot more clout than me or whatever it may be. That's a very similar scenario with you as a 15 year old, as a freshman or sophomore in high school, thinking about the juniors and seniors, thinking about the captains on the teams, thinking about the returning state champion on the wrestling team or the returning team captain, uh, of your wrestling team. I was the same way. I always took the back seat. I was a small guy from a small town who was taught to do small things. Don't, don't boast. Don't overdo it. Don't make people feel uncomfortable. Don't think too highly of yourself. Um, I would say my advice would be just go into it knowing that you might fall flat on your face physically in the wrestling room, but also, um, metaphorically, you might make a joke and it doesn't land. You might try to hang out with the cool kids. Maybe they're going to, uh, whatever McDonald's after, after uh, school or whatever, going to the Sonic, to the Sonic after school, hanging out in the parking lot. And you're like, Hey guys, can I go? And you don't get, you don't get invited or they, they find a way to ditch you or whatever it may be. It's a part of all the series of vicissitudes that we have to go through as we grow, as we age. But the biggest thing you can do also is find your, find your group of friends, your age that you're hanging with, that have the same goals as you, that want to wrestle in the off season with you, that want to go to wrestling camps, they want to go to wrestling tournaments, they want to go to wrestling practices over the summer, find those people and start making the coaches notice your work ethic, your punctuality, that you show up on time your hard work, the fact that you are asked to do something and you not just do what is asked of you, but do what more than what is asked of you. And you'll start to get noticed. That's what I had to do. Um, but ultimately nobody is better than anybody else. It doesn't matter if they were the returning state champion and the senior, you're in this little microcosm called high school. And when you're my age, you're going to look back and say, man, look where I'm at. <laughs> you know, you're going to say, man, why did I put so much pressure on myself back then? Man, why was I so afraid to talk to that guy back then? Why was I so afraid to talk to that girl back then? Right? Eventually, you're going to get to the point where you look back and, and wish that you would have been a little bit more. Put yourself out there. Put yourself out there a little bit more. You can't learn to fly if you're afraid to leave the ground. So, Frank, best of luck next wrestling season. Go out there. Work extremely hard, be the hardest worker in the room, show up on time, and you'll get noticed. And then the respect will grow. The respect for you will grow. Not just in the wrestling room, but it'll make you a happier, healthier, and harder to kill young man in your social circles, in the sport, in your classrooms, and ultimately in your school, and ultimately in life. Thank you, Frank. Next one comes from Zane. Hey, Michael, my name is Zane. I'm 17, a junior in high school, and I live in North Alabama, about three hours away from Nashville. I love MMA, and I would love to have a career in it. I turned 18 in June, and I'm just curious what you would begin with. I'm mostly self-taught. My dad is a black belt in karate, so when he was younger and I... So when he was younger... And I was about seven to 11. He taught me a few skills. How do I know I'm ready for my first fight? And what would you recommend me to do toward my next step? I've been lifting weights consistently for two years. My brother is a bodybuilder, so I started young. I know the basics of wrestling and I'm pretty confident in my striking abilities. I spar a lot with my friends who I've talked about wanting to pursue the UFC and they have done nothing but encourage me. One more thing. My girlfriend of three years supports my goals, but I'm worried things will change after I really pursue it. And she notices more time apart. My mom hates the thoughts of me in a cage fighting. So do you know of any way I could, I could ease her thoughts about it? Thanks, Michael. See you at the top. God bless you and your family. Well, Zane, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, number one, I would say it's good that your dad was a black belt in karate. So you got a little bit of the skills, your brother's a bodybuilder. So therefore you've been hitting some weights maybe, um, or you at least have been around it enough, um, watching your brother lift weights, seeing that lifting weights does increase muscle mass. It then will increase, uh, athletic performance. It is a vital aspect of athletic endeavors. Um, you said you have the basics of wrestling. I would say if you're 17, there's no reason why you shouldn't be on your wrestling team at high, in your high school if they have one. If they don't have one, you should be joining a club team. I don't think the wrestling at any MMA gym that you could go to is going to be enough. 
I think you need to compete in wrestling. I think the sport of wrestling molds you into something different than you can be just training at a mixed martial arts gym. Um, secondly, when it comes to training and mixed martial arts gyms, is there a good gym in North Alabama? Is there a good gym within 30 minutes to an hour that you can go to where there's good coaches, where there are good training partners, where there is any kind of success uh, or any anybody there fighting training that has had any success, whether it be BJJ competitions, uh, mixed martial arts competitions. So your main question is, um, how do I know when I'm ready to have my first fight? You said you've been lifting weights and you say you also spar a lot with your friends. That's where I would stop you right there. And, or you spar a lot with your friend. That's where I would stop you there as long as it's not just you and your friend sparring you need to be in a mma gym you need to not just spar with your friend you need to spar with guys that you don't know or that you don't know when you first when you first walk into the gym guys who know how to spar guys who will give you a look similar to what it's going to feel like what it's going to be like when you actually step into the cage for the first time because it is no joke said your mom hates the thought of you in a cage fight of course she does she's your mom <laughs> i would hate the thought of my son my son's fighting in a cage and I've been doing it now for 15 years. I hate the thought of my son stepping up to a plate in a baseball game right now because I'm afraid he's going to strike out in front of all these people. But I know the embarrassment that he feels, the failure that he might feel, the frustration that he might feel is just another part of his journey to getting to becoming a better young man. So of course she doesn't like it because it's not just the competition aspect of it. You possibly losing a fight. It's the fact that her baby could get hurt. Of course. Um, the best thing that you can do with the relationship with your, the relationship with MMA and your mom is make sure you're trained, make sure you show her how, how much time you're putting in. Because if you're just sparring with your friend and you're lifting some weights and you quote unquote, know the basics of wrestling, it's just not enough. None of that is enough. I want to hear that you've been in your MMA gym four to five times a week, every single week for years, sparring numerous times a week, drilling every single day, lifting weights, building yourself into someone that wants to fight. Now, granted, you're only 17 years old. So I don't think you need to worry about having your first fight. If you didn't have your first fight until you were 20, you're still in a good spot. We underestimate how quickly a mixed martial arts career can progress in this day and age. So 17 years old, get in your MMA gym. I would join a wrestling team if you can, if you have one at your high school or join a club wrestling team and compete. Go out there and compete. Competition inside the gym isn't enough. Compete in BJJ, compete in wrestling, compete in karate, compete in kickboxing, compete in whatever you can because you need that competition. You need a bell to sound, gloves to touch, and then get into a physical altercation where you are competing against somebody for getting your hand raised. So, Zane, hope that helps. And, uh, Best of luck down in North Alabama. If you ever come to Nashville, come over here and train at Nashville MMA. Next one comes from Anonymous. Hey, Mike, thank you for answering my question before. Before It means a lot. I've been dating this girl for almost four years. We've, we've been doing long distance for three years now and see each other every two or three weeks since we go to different colleges. I'm a division one wrestler and she's a sorority girl. Clearly, we live very different lifestyles. I feel as if our values do not align in certain ways. I don't care about that party lifestyle, but she does. She is always going out, as sorority girls do, but it's taking a toll on me. I constantly worry about her going out all the time and if she'll cheat on me, especially when she's drunk. And my overthinking always tells me that she is cheating on me and that something is off. This is an issue because it takes up a lot of my mental space and stops me from enjoying whatever it is I'm doing in the moment. There's never been any instance where she's cheated, where she's cheated that I know of, but I know how the party slash club life is since I've been around it and I know guys can, and I know how guys can act. It seems like a trust issue that I can't f quite figure out because I've never been cheated on in the past. How can I stop worrying about her while she's out and Cut out this constant worrying and overthinking. It's a tough one. Um, without the backstory, without knowing where this 
seed of mistrust comes from, whether she has done things that she deserves to not be trusted. Um, as you said, she hasn't cheated on you that you know of. Um, but it is tough. We, we live in a world now where it's just so when people you're, well, you're living two completely different lives right now. I know what being a division one wrestler is and spending the amount of time that you spend not drinking, not partying, not going out, not doing all the things that I would call quote unquote, the college life. I always say I missed out on what most people call the college experience because I did and I'm completely okay with it. I'm glad I did because I was in love with the sport of wrestling, but it's very different from Greek life, sorority girls, fraternity guys. Um, there's always a reason to party. Actually, there's they're partying even when there's not a reason to party. You know, there's a party, there's a party going on next week, but we're going to party every day leading up to that because that's just what we do. We're in Delta this and they're in Sigma that. So we're going to go have a mixer and drink and do whatever. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You say that in your email. I say there's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy your time. But yes, you guys have two completely different lives. Doesn't mean that she's a bad person person. Doesn't mean she's a bad girl. Doesn't mean she's a bad girlfriend, but yes, living in separate places, the distance, only seeing each other every two or three weeks, the lifestyle that she lives compared to the lifestyle that you live. Um, that's a tough one. And as we said, I, I don't know where the seed comes from, why you feel the way that you do. And if it is taking over your life, if it is especially cutting into your performance at school, your performance at practice, which ultimately will be your perform performances on the mats, you got to ask yourself, is staying with her worth it? You've also got to ask yourself, is uh, telling her you love her? or you care about her, or you want to be with her, but it's just not the right time for you guys to be together right now. And you're focused on wrestling. You're focused on your goal. You're focused on your number one goal. I can tell you this, guys. We talk about breakups. We talk about women breaking up with you or leaving you or wanting some space or want to go find themselves. It's a tough pill to swallow. I get it. But how attractive is it if you tell, if you told them, Hey, I need to, I need to focus on this. I'm in love with the sport of wrestling. I'm in love with becoming a better me so that I can eventually become a better you or whoever I marry. As I said, in the very beginning, I think the first question of this show, there's nothing more attractive than a man who can stand on his own two feet and who is confidently walking forward by himself whether it be completely by himself or around a complete crowd of witnesses, hundreds of witnesses of him walking tall, chest out, nose up, not better than anybody, but very proud of himself. It's very, very important that we're able to stand on our own two feet and you are self-sufficient. If her actions, which like I said, there's nothing wrong with them from what I can see in the email, aside from the fact that she's enjoying her college experience. If her actions are cutting into your life, making you worry, making you sad, upset, mad, depressed, anxious, whatever words, buzzwords we want to use these days, then you got to ask yourself, is it worth continuing to pursue? Because I can tell you right now, whatever grade you are, whatever year you are in college, if you underperform to the point where you graduate and you get done with wrestling and you regret underperforming and it's her fault, you're going to be A, mad at yourself that you let her get in the way of it, or B, if you guys do stay together, you're going to hold that resentment for the rest of your life. You're going to hold that against her for the rest of your life. If you care about wrestling as much as I did, if you are committed as I was, and it's okay if you're not. But it's okay to have a conversation. Instead of saying, hey, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. Hey, I don't like it when you do this. Why didn't you call me at this time? Why didn't you text me back? What happened last night? Blah, blah, blah. All of that stuff. Why don't you have a conversation that says, hey, girlfriend, I don't think this is working out. And it's not that you've done anything wrong. You're enjoying your life. I just can't handle it. Take the onus. Take the responsibility. Say, I am focused on wrestling, getting good grades, getting my career or getting my college degree, and then focusing on the future. 
might make her take stock in what she's doing. It also is going to be attractive to her. I'm not saying playing a, playing a game. I am against games. I think people in relationships play games way too much. They are petty and they are destructive and they are bad for all parties involved. But I am saying if you do truly believe that it's cutting into your wrestling or it's cutting into your mental health, it's okay to take a step back and it will be attractive and it will plant a flag and plant a flag in the ground and draw a line in the sand that you're focused on your priorities and your priorities are very important to you. So wish you the best of luck with that. As I said, she's not doing anything wrong. She's just living her life and you're not doing anything wrong and also showing yourself some grace because that's a tough scenario. Last one comes from Jake. Hey, Mike, I gained a whole new level of respect for you as an athlete after watching you lift, run, and shoot with Cam Haynes. Where do you get the drive and work ethic from to train at that level? Love the podcast. Big fan, Jake. Um, So Jake is talking about when I went out to Oregon to lift weights, run, and shoot bows with my friend Cameron Haynes, who is an absolute stud, phenomenal follow. Um, He just started his own show called the Keep Hammering Collective. Um, All those videos are on YouTube. My video, um, my recap video with him or about my experience with him is on my YouTube channel. Um, Where do I get my drive, man? I just think I'm so grateful. Even just the fact that we're talking about me going to Oregon running a marathon in one day, lifting weights, shooting bows, running up Mount Pisgah with Cameron Haynes, a guy that I admire, a guy that I want to be like in so many ways, strive to be like in so many ways. Um, I just live such an awesome life. I am so truly blessed to do what I do. I am so blessed to have the abilities that I have, to have built the body that I have built, the healthy body, the thriving body, mentally, physically, and spiritually where I'm at. And I have a lot of stuff I need to work on. I've gone through seasons of seasons, seasons of not feeling like that. But ultimately, I am very happy. I am very healthy. I have so many blessings in my life and a great group of people around me. And I have a great crowd of witnesses. So therefore, I'm so grateful. My work ethic comes from gratitude. I think it started back in the day, Mike and Betty Chandler, my mom and dad worked two and three jobs to make sure me and my two brothers were taken care of and we're going to get to where we needed to be and have every opportunity possible for me to be sitting here on a microphone with a huge platform that I have to live the life that I live. So my hard work stemmed from seeing the way that they operated and then also giving them a gift back called me showing up to work, work out, train with my best foot forward and do every single thing I possibly can to build myself and build a life for myself to give a nice hat tip. Thank you, mom and dad to them. And then I got married and then I had kids and then the platform kept growing. The bank account kept growing. The lights keep getting brighter and all these great blessings. And I say this about my life, but I don't say it to impress you. I say it to impress upon you. Think about the amazing things in your life. Too often, it's so easy to be a bad finder. Well, I want to change this. I can't believe that happened to me. I can't believe she did this to me. I can't believe he did that to me. I can't believe I don't have that. I can't believe he has that and I don't have that. I can't believe this didn't work out the way that I planned. I can't believe this door closed. I can't believe it's this temperature today. The sun isn't out today. I can't believe I'm wearing these clothes. I can't believe I drive that car. I can't believe I'm not where I thought I was going to be. There's so many things that we can be unhappy with instead of just focusing on the things that we do have. You don't have to have a lot. You just don't need to be missing a dang thing, if that makes sense. Love, joy, peace, contentment, people around you, health, health, health. If you have two capable arms and two capable legs and you have a healthy body, think about the millions upon millions of people who it's hard for them to even get out of bed in the morning. It's hard for them to do even normal menial tasks that you take for granted. Who don't have family support. Whose mental health is in the dumps whose body is in the dumps, 
whose relationships are in the dumps. Guarantee people listening, so many people right now listen, listening right now, there's millions of people that would trade places with you at the drop of a hat. Yet we focus only on the negative things about our life. That's why I think it's so important. I bring it up almost every single show to wake up in the morning, get your mind right. Get out your gratitude journal. Be great. Find out or remember and write down what you're grateful for. Writing down what you want to do, what you want to be, what you want to have. See it clearly in your mind. So that's where my work ethic comes from. My work ethic comes from being so dang grateful. I don't think we have motivation problems. I think we have gratitude problems. I don't think we have energy problems. I think we have gratitude problems. I don't think we have depression and anxiety problems. I think we have gratitude problems. And I've gone through seasons of my life where I'm not focused on gratitude and I've just continued a downward spiral and oh, woe is me and feel sorry for myself. I'm not telling you that I've figured it all out and I am perfect when it comes to staying grateful and staying in the gratitude um, mindset, being a good finder. We all are going to go through our ups and downs, but overall, if you're going through something right now, start with gratitude. If you want to work harder, start with gratitude. If you want to make more money, make more friends, make a bigger impact, have more gratitude. If you want to find yourself running up a mountain with Cameron Haynes, somebody that you admire, getting in the same room with him, getting to spend time with him, running a marathon with him, have more gratitude. Things will continue to fall into place. We talk a lot about depression and anxiety or all these different things that we're going through, bad things that happen. And I've said it numerous times, if a bad thing happens, but a good thing comes from it, was it really a bad thing? Grateful for the quote unquote bad things that have happened to you, especially when you look back and realize, holy cow, that bad thing happened was actually the greatest thing that could have happened. But it's a great question. I think that's where my, where my work ethic comes from, where my drive comes from. I've been given some amazing gifts. And to not flourish those gifts, to not use those gifts to the best of my abilities, is to sacrifice those gifts, is to look my creator in the face and say, oh, I know I got a lot left in the tank. Sorry, I didn't use it all. How beautiful would it be if you get to the pearly gates and your creator says, good job. You have nothing left. You had to crawl to the doorstep, to the gates, the pearly gates, because you have nothing left. You left it all out there. The tank is completely empty. You've got time. You've still got time. You might've messed it up. You might have been underperforming. You might have really, really made a mess of your life. You might have really, really made a mess of a lot of blessings. You might have really, really made a mess of a lot of seasons and a lot of things. But I promise you, the best is yet to come for he who has gratitude, who he hitches his dreams and his goals and his aspirations to a shooting star, continues to operate with integrity and gratitude and gratefulness. Thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. Um, if you found this helpful, if somebody needs to hear this, any of these messages, any of these questions that we answered today, make sure you share it with them. Um, leave a comments, hit that like button, rate, rate the podcast, um, send us your feedback, whether it's on YouTube in the video version or the audio version. If you're listening in the car right now, I hope you found some value. Also, if you did, um, just find us today, just find the show today, send your questions into e or podcast at michaelchandler.com and we will get those emails. We will sort through them and we will answer your questions. Thank you guys so much for trusting me to give you wisdom here on walk on wisdom and have a wonderful day wherever you're at. God bless. And I will see you at the top.